What's going on YouTube? So today I have a, another wedding commentary for you guys. Um, what I like doing is kind of waiting for these wedding videos that I upload to get to a thousand views or more, uh, just so that they have enough comments and all this stuff to, um, to kind of give you guys that commentary. Uh, this one was um, a super cool wedding. It was like in central Florida, we're based out of Miami, so it was like a two and a half, three hour drive from us. But uh, yeah, the couple got us like a hotel and all this stuff. So um, yeah, it was super cool, a really fun experience. Um, it was at this place called the Bella Colina. It reminded me of like a mini Italy in, uh, but like in like its own little property. But uh, yeah, so first things first, let's check out these comments and um, I'll just answer some of these questions for you guys. Any chance that this was done with autofocus? So this whole wedding was shot on the Panasonic S1H. Um, everyone that has the S1H kind of knows that like the you can't rely on the S1H with focus. The autofocus is basically like non-existent with this camera. Um, you know, you're also running. Well, I run like uh, all Canon lenses through an adapter, the MC21 Sigma adapter, into the camera. So once you have an adapter on any camera, you know the chances of using autofocus goes down a lot or the reliability of the autofocus goes down a lot. But this whole thing, this whole wedding was done um, on the S1H. There was one camera that was the X-T3 in the background uh, for like the, the ceremony shot, the, the third shot for the ceremony. But other than that, the whole wedding was done S1H with no autofocus. The lighting in every shot seems to be perfectly lit. Uh, how is that possible outside of a movie set? Dude, honestly, man, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, just having the proper exposure and using natural light uh, with like windows, um, not being afraid to tell the bride and groom like, hey, you know, this, this idea is great, but let's move you over here. Um, yeah, you know, like there, there was some shots in this video that I'll go over in a minute uh, where the lighting was just really bad, but we have to position them nicely to just, just to get that lighting that you know, you can work with. Thank you guys for all these compliments. Like, uh, of course, that, that means a lot to us. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. What's your Cine D setting, saturation, contrast, sharpening? Um, actually, I don't know. But I know we have, we just use Cine like D. And um, I don't think we did anything to saturation and contrast. Uh, I know I did I did bring the highlights down if that's one of the options. That's what I would do uh, That's one of the first things I do when I edit the footage I just get that highlight in, in Adobe Premiere and the Lumetri color I just grab the highlight bar and just drag it all the way down to negative 100 and you see that the S1H like The footage you can pull back all those highlights and it there's highlights like the details there. So um, Yeah, I, mean, I, I responded. Let me see yeah, for we have the highlights all the way down, but everything is the same. Yeah, so yeah, okay, cool. Um, when did I reply to that? Three months ago, there you go. Uh, I watched this for your colors, they're some of the best I've seen. Thank you. Uh, we just do a lot of like work with the grade, um, but we don't really do that much. Uh, one of like my, my main things that I do is just bringing the shadows down to separate uh, the, the main focus. Uh, if the focus is like well lit, um, kind of like me right now, like I have a light right here, it's hitting me, I'm brighter than everything else in the image except the, the logo that's there. Um, but yeah, once you bring the shadows down a little bit, it's, uh, for me, it kind of like separates the background from what the main focus is. Uh, and once you have that, you have like that nice separation and then you just adjust the saturation to what you want. And when you bring the highlights down, you get the detail in the highlights, but yeah, I don't know, that's really the, the gist of the coloring that we do. Use can lenses only, I own an S1, S1H myself, but the native pants on lenses look different. Um, yeah, so we use all Canon mount, like EF mount lenses. Uh, right now I'm shooting with a Tokina 11 to 16. Uh, we have the Canon 35, the Canon 50, the Canon 85. Used to have the Rockin' on 85, but we upgraded. I think we have another like off-brand one, I just can't. I can't think of it right now. But um, but yeah, we just run everything through the Canon MC21 adapter. 
Color grading is next level. Do you do heavy grading? Uh, what's the magic sauce? I think I just explained it. It's kind of like with the shadows. Um, I just like that separation, and I think that's what I explained here. Uh, you know, yeah, I just match each shot to the best of my ability. Uh, yeah, of course, everyone uses LUTs. We just have that, that folder, and we just drag and drop LUTs, whatever we look nice. But I never use LUTs at like, 100%. Um, I normally like you can mix and match them, but I, I when I drop them into Lumetri color, uh, I just like use like 20 30% of a LUT just to give like the whole overall thing like the same look. So if you were to take a screenshot from the beginning, the middle, and end and put it all together, uh, it would all have the same look. But again, if your white balance is proper and all that stuff, it should be the same uh, throughout the whole film, anyways. So uh, let's get into it. I'll just start from the beginning and then kind of just go from there and just give you guys my thoughts on the shots. Cool, so what's really cool is like, th this was actually the venue right here, this little mini Italy looking thing. And then um, this was the hotel that the bride and groom stayed at where they got ready in. So it was kind of cool that uh, we were able to get a drone shot with the, uh, the venue and the hotel all together. And if I were to tell you this is Central Florida, like you wouldn't believe me. It's only just missing mountains, really. All right, I'm gonna get full screen. So, um, yeah, for this shoot, we took we took the S1H. Uh, we didn't take any gimbals. It was just S1H tripod and slider, and then that one XT3. Um, all these shots. I'm pretty sure we're done the 24 to 105. We just walked around the venue for like half an hour or so and just captured just some shots. Just zoom out 24, zoom in 105, zoom out 24. You know, that's 105. We just, just walk around the whole place and just get all these shots. And then again, um, exposure is like a, a really big deal. So one of like the, our like, our key things that we focus on is just making sure the sky is exposed properly. Um, don't cr like criticize me, but there are some shots that where the sky is blown out, but that's just because what, like the main focus in the shot just needed to be exposed properly. But like things like this, um, I think this shot looks amazing, honestly. Uh, the shadows look nice, the fall off's nice, and it kind of just sets the mood for like the venue. Um, yeah, just static shots. And all the drone shots are just the Mavic 2. Um, but like, for example, this one is like the crop mode. Uh, it gives it the more like parallax, like things moving in the background and foreground. Um, yeah, so uh, these are just done like 35, 50 millimeter shots. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy. These were uh, 24 to 105. Uh, we set it up. We try to get each detail shot like at 24, then like 50, then 85 and 105, just to get uh, all the little details. Yeah, there's nothing really crazy about these. Uh, we, of course, we do it uh, multiple times. So, like, all these shots are separate takes. Uh, so it's like, all right, guys, uh, put all the glasses together and pretend it's a boomerang. Um, and then all the girls know what a boomerang is, so they just keep going back and forth. And then we're like, okay, guys, look at each other, smile, and then we get this shot. And then all the different poses that the photographer uh, wants to do, we do. Um, again, all the drone shots, fill up time, fill up the space. Uh, again, like I was mentioning earlier, the, the room that the, the groom was getting ready in really wasn't the best room. It was more like, um, like a locker room for guys. Uh, and there was no light whatsoever inside that room. Uh, so we put them next to the only window to get these shots. And then again, you can see that the lighting is like, I don't want to say terrible, but it's really bad. Um, but we just really like the framing of this shot. So we just put them there and we took a couple of these shots here. And then again, um, facing the window, it's better. I think this shot, um, it could have been a horrible shot. Imagine if we had him facing the other way and then just exposed for the room. Uh, that's when you get like that really washed out look. You don't really get um, like the just lighting on his face. The shadows are would be horrible. Um, 
But yeah, I do this, you light him properly, and then you just drop the shadows and post, and then you get this image where the only thing that you're focused on is the groom and his outfit. And then again in here, the lighting was, it, it was all right. But again, you know, all the lighting is coming from that back window. And then you have all the tungsten colored lights in the room. So this, these shots were graded like really heavily, or I would say corrected really heavily. I had to go in and like, uh, selectively pick some colors and just like desaturate them all the way. So like this whole entire shot was basically orange um, because I didn't want the windows to be blue. You know, so if you would have exposed for the tungsten lights at 3200, um, the window would have just been completely blue. And then I feel like it's harder to work with that blue window light than it is to desaturate the orange uh, tungsten lights. So all these skin tones were completely orange. They look like the Oompa Loompa people. And, um, but yeah, I just bring it in, desaturate it, and it ends up looking really nice. So you can kind of see here, like on her cheek and then on the skin right here, it is kind of red and orange, but I mean, it, it ended up looking nice at the end. Again, all these little details, shooting 1080-60. Uh, we really don't shoot 4K-60 on the S1H because there's like a major crop at 4K-60. Um, so all the slow motion shots are 1080p. And um, we just come out for our first look and uh, we get this. Two camera setup, when all this was happening, I was running, I think this is a, I think I was running the 35 millimeter. Uh, for this whole portion, and then Jesse, my business partner, was running an 85 millimeter. Just set up that one tripod shot. Uh, one thing that we we tell our couples to do, which is a good tip for you guys also, um, when the groom is doing the first look, we never tell him to turn all the way around. We have to give the groom direction and the bride direction. So we tell the groom, when you get tapped on your shoulder, turn like directly to your side. Don't turn around completely. And then we tell the bride, when you go to tap on your groom's shoulder, like take that extra step so then you're standing next to him and then you guys look at each other then. So if I'm the groom and my bride taps me on the shoulder and this is your wide shot, the last thing you want is for the groom to go like this and then you don't have a shot. Um, so we do this thing where it ends up looking like this and it looks really nice when they both turn and look at each other. And then uh, this camera is gets both of the reactions instead of a two, like two cameras shooting front and back and one's on the groom, one's on the bride. Now you're able to get both reactions in one shot while I'm able to reposition with my 35 millimeter. And I'm able to come in and then get this shot from the side. After that, uh, we're on to like the portrait session. Uh, this place was uh, was kind of easy to work with. If you just take out all those like modern elements with like like just safety things like the railings and all that stuff, it would look literally like Italy. Um, but yeah, these shots were all nice. Uh, you can see this one here. Um, yeah, all these shots are handheld. When we do these travel shoots, we never really take the, the gimbal with us. Um, and I don't even run the S1H on the gimbal anyways because uh, there's no autofocus. So when we do use a gimbal, it's mostly with the X-T3. But yeah, so all these shots that you see moving and handheld, um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a 60 frame per second 1080 video with the stabilizer, the internal stabilization on, and you get these. Again, 85, 35, 85, a 35 shot there. Um, we, call, we call these shots like those, like, uh, no offense, but like those like hipster, like static shots. Uh, we like to always try to throw one or two in there because um, couples like them. You know, it's just those static, uh, the couple seems smaller than usual. Uh, and you get that. Framing's cool, looks cool. Again, all handheld. All these shots are handheld, 85, 85, 35. That looks great. <laughs> um, then yeah, just more establishing shots. 
Uh, for audio, they had a really, really good like sound team there. Um, give them the, the the Tascam device that we have. Run the lab on the groom. And uh, here you can see the camera looks like it's moving, but we we just normally do like a, especially in the highlight video, we try to like like whenever it's static, like for the ceremony, just do like a small push in with like the scaling. So within those two seconds, I'd go from like 100% to like 103% just to make it look like it's moving. Therefore, it is now my pleasure to now pronounce Like a small little push in. And wife, Grand, you may kiss your beautiful wife. Yeah, and again, handheld shots uh, for the majority of it. Um, yeah, so these are some of my favorite shots we've ever captured for a wedding. That shot especially. Uh, when I brought it into Premiere and then I stabilized it uh, even more with Warp Stabilizer, it blew my mind with how, like, how awesome it looked. Um, yeah, look at this. Yeah, and then just all establishing shots. When we get into the nighttime stuff, the S1H, like, kills it. It's ridiculous. And then we just, uh, for the lighting, we just run all the lighting with these, like these little LED panels that we have here. I think I have them listed down below. They're only like 40, 50 bucks or something. Like the batteries cost more than the actual light itself. Um, but uh, yeah, so Layton, you can't really see it there, but that's like a practical light, but right like maybe five feet to his right, um, further off screen, uh, there was a light there. And then, yeah, we're just like blasting lights at that at that at this point, just like hitting them. And then again, you know, like one, what I was trying to tell you guys earlier is when you have like your the main subject lit well. I'm not gonna say properly because sometimes they're overexposed or underexposed, but when they're lit well and they separate nicely from the background, you get images like this where you see the bride and groom dancing nicely, but then everything else kind of fades to black, but they're lit like nice and bright. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. That's that's one of my favorite like dancing uh, reception shots ever. Honestly, uh, they're lit really, really well, and everything else is dark. The only thing that bothers me is that this guy was wearing white. If he was wearing black, uh, that would have helped the fall off of the like the shadows a lot nicer. And um, throughout all those dancing shots, uh, they only uh, wanted a highlight video. So we knew going into it that uh, we could be less safe. Um, so my business partner was on the 85 millimeter and I just ran around like the dance floor on a 50 millimeter going behind like the little, like the decor, the trees, like getting behind people over the shoulder shots. And um, yeah, then I ended up with shots like this and the one, like the previous shot. Normally we would just be super safe, uh, just two tripods, but for this one we, uh, we're a little unsafe. Um, yeah, I flew the drone at night. The low light performance is honestly not that good, but uh, if, if, you were at, if you were there, you know exactly what it looks like, so you're able to put two and two together and know that that's the venue, but Honestly, you can't really see that much. Uh, you can kind of see like the party lights right here, but I mean, it's still cool to get that view from above at nighttime. Yeah, it's like all these um, 85 millimeter. Yeah, mostly when it gets to the reception, um, we run 85 and the 50, and then occasionally we'll just bring in like this lens, the 11 to 16, and then just shoot like some weird angles and stuff. Then they had um, the sparkler exit. Uh, so we just capture that. Look at these dirty lenses. Oh, that's actually the sensor. Dirty sensor. It's clean now though. Um, yeah, and then uh, handheld on the 35. I believe it was a 35 on the exit. Yeah, that's a 35. Um, again, this these shots, uh, 
it's just the tungsten lights. It was like really, really orange. So again, you just select that orange color, desaturate it a little bit, and then we got this. And that's it, guys. So thanks again for watching. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to write them down below. I try to answer all of them. Um, if you guys have any recommendations for me or something for me to check out, let me know. Feel free to subscribe. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Bye.